From time to time, people reach out to me to evaluate their quad to see if it is flying well because it used to be tuned or things of that nature. You'll also see it on the Facebook groups where people will post some DVR, some HD footage, maybe some black box data, and they'll ask like, hey, is this flying well? You know, is it, does it need to be tuned? You know, it's usually, sometimes it's beginners, sometimes it's people intermediate, and honestly, sometimes it's people that are advanced. Bottom line, FPV FOMO, fear of missing out, is alive and well. People, you know, have their quad, it flies, it flies what they're used to, but they don't know if it's flying at peak performance. Well, in today's video, we're gonna show you how to determine that for yourself. It's very easy to see if your quad is flying well mechanically and with the tune by using a couple simple tools. So let's get into it. So the first thing you wanna do is turn on the analytical tool in Betaflight to assess the mechanical performance of the drone and the tune performance of the drone as well. That's gonna be down here on the left-hand side. It's called Black Box Explorer. And in that, you will either have, as you can see up top here, or it's over here, I guess, above my head, there's Data Flash is one option. Another option is some flight controllers have a chip. It's actually a micro SD card that you can install on your flight control and will slide into it. This will provide more storage, but the data flash up here is fine. And we're gonna show you a couple things you can do here to maximize. A lot of stuff has data flash up top. It's usually like 16 or more meg. And if it's 16, you're gonna get about one flight. We can stretch it out to about two or three by doing a couple things here. So uh, on here, you can see what you're gonna choose for storage method. And this is gonna record, this is like a, putting your car on a dyno. So right, this is gonna record all kinds of information we can look at and just look at very simply to see how things are performing. Uh, some of the stuff we don't need in here. So let's check off some of these things to save space. Like we don't need gyro, we don't need GPS data, we don't need accelerometer, we don't need attitude, we don't need RSSI, we don't need altitude, we don't need magnetometer, we don't need battery. Uh, but the rest of the stuff, we sh you know, you're gonna wanna keep, you're gonna need RC command so you can get set point, set point, and comparing that to gyro is gonna be the main thing we're gonna look at here. Uh, this will tell us motor RPM data or motor command data, I'm sorry, and this will tell us feedback motor RPM data, very helpful. This is gonna tell us the gyro signal coming in with raw vibrations, and then the gyro is gonna be after the filtering, so we can even assess that. The other thing we're gonna do here is make sure we have this up at the top set to two kilohertz. Two kilohertz or one kilohertz would uh, most likely be fine. The If we look at any vibration stuff with it, it's only as accurate about half the sampling frequency. So if we get uh, data at two kilohertz range, you can only really look at vibrations down to a thousand hertz, a thousand vibrations per second. If you go to one kilohertz, which is a thousand vibrations per second, then you can only look at like vibrations, the actual vibrations are seen on the quad down to 500 hertz, which is 500 vibrations per second. Uh, that's cutting it somewhat close. Uh, you would not want to go any less than that. So you could extend it out. You could do one kilohertz if you're just looking at tuning information, not really necessarily looking at like noise information or vibration information uh, that can affect uh, the tune and, and the flight controller and things of that nature. But if you're wanting to look at vibrational information, I would recommend two kilohertz. So a lot of times I will do two kilohertz up front and then if I'm like past all the vibration stuff and my filters are, you know, I'm happy with those, um, then I will look, or, you know, I've used a preset and it looks like it's going well, then I'll come back uh, maybe on subsequent flights and change this down to, to one kilohertz if it's just like uh, PID tuning, things of that nature. And I can get, and the whole reason being is I can get more flights out of that 16 mega flash up there. So uh, for now, I'll just say two kilohertz for there make these changes here. The other thing we're gonna do is, and this is uh, icing on the cake, is in this debug mode here, we're gonna set this to FFT frequency. So debug modes are essentially additional data that the developers use to develop Betaflight. But in addition to that, there's some useful stuff in here that you can use, especially if you subscribe to PID Toolbox, they have some tools that uses FFT frequency. This will tell you where the center of these things called dynamic notches are and these these notches follow the vibrations and and dampen out uh, vibrations that the frame you know has that the gyro picks up and that can screw up your pid loop and stuff like that so these will tell you exactly where the center of those notches are and in tracking things so it's it's useful to have it's more advanced thing but 
nevertheless, yeah, you can set this uh, and it will uh, give you some additional information that you may use in the future. Again, if you're looking to safe space, just set set this to none or just uh, uncheck the debug. You know, you can leave this at that and then just uncheck that. And then if, if you want to check that on in the future, don't forget, of course, to make sure you hit the save and reboot and that will save all those settings. OK, now with that set up, you need to go out and fly your quad and you're going to want to uh, fly it like you stole it. However, with that, you just can't fly around. You got to do some specific flight moves. You need to do them hard and fast if you, you know, as you can, uh, obviously in a five inch quad or something that you're freestyling or racing, uh, there's a lot of stability there that you should be able to do that. If it's a bigger quad, like a 13 inch, 15 inch, 12 inch, something like that, you probably want to be a little careful, especially if this is the first time you're flying the bird. But the big point here is you need to do prescribed moves. It's only a couple different things. So let's show you what those are. So what I usually like to start with is a nice step throttle punch. Next, just some nice, simple one axis rolls. And a lot of times I'll try to get them both directions. So you can tell if there's anything weird with one motor or another motor, like that. Same thing with flips. Nice, clean flips, one axis. Next thing we want to do is some half rate moves. So here we want to just do one axis, twitch, twitch back and forth. And you guessed it, same thing for a pitch. And then again, y'all. And we kind of got a couple on y'all already, but we'll do some more. Now, the next thing here is throttle pump. So we're just gonna kind of punch the throttle. And we're trying to see if we get throttles. The next thing I wanna look at is just some nice, steady flight. So I'm gonna try not to touch the sticks at all. It's a little breezy today, so let me duck behind these trees. I kind of want to get some proximity to things. And here you can see I'm not touching the sticks at all. I'm just going to see how that looks for steady flight. Final thing is just some prop wash moves. You can do that with that or split S turns. Kind of sit into the it into it there. You can see I'm getting some wash on this, but I'm really trying to draw it out. Okay, the battery's getting a little low here. Um, that's generally it. Those are generally the moves, and I gotta bring this back. 3.4, it's getting a little low. Okay, perfect. You're back from the field. You've done those input moves. Now we're gonna come back to beta flight in this example, and we're going to get that data off the flight controller. So to do that, we then go again back to black box tab here, and you can hit this activate mass storage device. And that's either if you have data flash up top there or an SSD card, you're gonna go hit that. And that will make the data flash or the SD storage come up as a drive letter in your computer. And you can see we have information here. From this point, you can open the data directly from here. So we don't even need to copy it off. If you wanted to, of course, you can copy it off. We can erase it from here as well if we wanted to do that. If you do copy it off to your computer, which probably is what I'd recommend, it's gonna be a little quicker to open, but you can open it direct from here and then just delete it to go back out to save yourself some time and step. Uh, it will take a little longer because it uh, if you open it across the the you know the USB drive just because the communication is not as fast as opening the file right from your hard drive. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to theuavtech.com and in here I store um, black box. So if we go to this black box tab here, let me shrink myself and I go over to this black box ninja stuff right here and I click on that. You can learn some more information about black box, but what we want here is we're going to grab these uh, trace templates. So we're going to right click on this and then we're going to hit save link as 
and then that will enable us to download and save this JSON file. You can see the extension JSON. And we're gonna save that in our downloads folder for now is fine. So the next thing we're gonna do is using Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, we're going to go to blackbox.betaflight.com. And this is the, uh, the explorer that we can open that black box file in. We're going to go hit open log file. And you can see I have one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And then once that opens, I'm gonna go back up to the open dialog up here. And I'm gonna go find that JSON file that I downloaded. Downloaded that here, right here I have it. So I'm gonna click on that and hit open. And what that is gonna do, it's gonna tell us first the, the workspaces are loaded here. And let me shrink myself over here. And what that's gonna do is give you these now drop downs here so you can load different workspaces. Uh, in here you can do a bunch of stuff, but the biggest thing that we're gonna look at to see if your drone is flying well is going to this stick tracking. And that's the primary one we're gonna look at to see if it's following the tune very really well or if it needs adjustment. Now in this, there's a lot going on with all these different uh, lines, squiggly lines here. But ultimately this is you going through the flight uh, as it goes. So you can literally hit the space bar and watch that play through and you can zoom in and zoom out and you can see, uh, you can adjust the play speed and all kinds of stuff. But ultimately we can actually go in here and see where the quad is actually set to do some of those flips and rolls that we talked about getting. So there's a couple things that you know here, like I can turn on expo and turn off. So the expo like exaggerates the vertical uh, offset of stuff right at the line here. That's what that is. So that's important to know. And we're gonna turn that off for now. That's on by default. The other thing to know on here, just to break this down a little bit, uh, again, we're on this uh, stick tracking, is this is the roll axis, the pitch axis, the yaw axis. This is the motor commands, and this is the RPM data coming back from the, the quad. So you can see a lot, a lot of information in with black box data to dissect issues, to see if mechanically it's working well, to see uh, just all kinds of stuff uh, that you can do with black box. It's really, really a, a robust tool. But here we're just gonna specifically look at like, is my quad flying well? Do I have FPV FOMO? Do I have a fear of missing out? Like, should I be tuning this? Or, or do those presets I loaded working really well? And that's what we're really here to answer today. So you did those stepped inputs. We're gonna look, this one is a full flip uh, roll. Uh, you can see here through this move and uh, we're gonna see how well it's doing. How well is the tune look? And uh, what this shows here is this is your set point. So your set point is your sticks. And you can kind of see that here with the stick inputs and as they're going, uh, you can see it's like full throttle here. And then there's a left roll. So you can kind of look at these, these sticks right here on the screen. And you can see full throttle drops the throttle, not all the way down, almost all the way down. And then does a full left roll and then kind of eases up and then more of a roll and then uh, we're at that spot. So it's just like a kind of in the middle of some acro. So that's the green line is really the set point information. Didn't mean to click that. And what we want to evaluate is this gyro line here. So this is the gyro data. So this is what the quad is actually doing when we make this command. And what the ideal scenario is, is that this gyro line is following the setback line in a video game type of setup where it's like simulated computer those would be exactly on top of each other and then the feel of the quad is really just your rates uh, how soft they are in the center how fast rotational rate so on and so forth your spring how much spring tension you have on your transmitter all those little factors go into your the little knobs you have on the end of the gimbals all those factors go into feel in the real world uh, we're giving the quad commands, but the PID loop is actually what's driving the quad to follow those left roll, forward, backward, all the things that we're telling it to do with the gimbals. So in the, in the real world, there's gonna be a little bit of an offset there of what we're actually commanding it to do versus what it's actually doing. Long story short, if it is completely following it, like pretty much this one is, where you know it's right on top of it the whole way, and you can see here, there's just little deviations 
of it. But by and large, that gyro is right on top of the set point. Now, uh, we'll talk about this here in a little bit, but you can see that it's, it's tracking it. So right in face value here, that's what you're looking for. And uh, if you have that, if you're loading a preset or loaded one preset and that was okay, and then you loaded a different preset and you're like, ah, oh, it felt different. I wonder if it flies different. You just wanted that kind of non-biased uh, input. Well, that's, this is how you'd compare them. You'd load a preset, go fly it around, do some prescribed moves like I talked about. Um, look at this information here. See what is it showing? How, how well is that tracking there? Uh, load the other preset. See how that looks. Uh, did it feel better for you? Did you like it more or less? Um, and then go look at this as a, a, a kind of an arbiter of information of, hey, is this tracking better or worse here? And playing this back in post-production, I forgot to mention one more thing. If your gyro is following your set point like we're showing there in that example, you're not gonna gain a lot through tuning. Like it is, other than moving your gains up and down holistically with maybe the master slider, that's about it. I mean, so like chasing the rabbit in trying to figure out if you need a custom tune, if you're getting it right from a preset, and a lot will vary on, you know, if you have a lightweight drone, a five inch drone, it doesn't have a heavy grow pearl on it like this one, almost like racing drones kind of time, a lot of times. They just track set point really, really well uh, just with any of the presets out there. So you don't need to worry about tuning. Uh, the biggest thing is you could maybe futz around with moving that master slider up and down uh, and that will essentially d increase your performance for a prop wash, but you can get it too far where you start to get a fluttery sound. And there's other interesting pieces of information you can ascertain by then comparing uh, different flights when you're applying different presets or applying different adjustments that you're personally making. In this example here, we have the one preset loaded here with the medium build quality. And then this is actually the high build quality. And you can see on this side, uh, if you're hearing this kind of fluttery sound uh, that the pilot was reporting back, that he heard with applying more filters. So that, you know, that confuses people. You applied more filtering, but now I hear this, this fluttery sound coming from my quad. Whereas before when I had the high build quality, I didn't have that fluttery sound. W what is that? Well, that's the stuff you can kind of see and ascertain and it's it's not uncommon. That's that's pretty normal. You're having more latency. So uh, you can see that, that like that difference and that fluttery sound is the PID loop oscillating back and forth here when he's entering flips and rolls uh, that you're not getting that oscillation or not nearly as much here as you can see with the high build quality. So ultimately, uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, I'm gonna have a Patreon video where we do a deep dive on this gentleman's quad, uh, interested in this very this very thing that this video is here to address is the FPV FOMO. Is my quad flying well? Should I tune it more? Is there more on the table that uh, I'm leaving? Like this feels good, but could it feel even better? And Black Box can cut right through that. So we're gonna go through this. He has the... Uh, um, my presets, it's a five inch drone. He has my presets on it. Flash Superfly's preset on it as well. We're gonna peel back the onion on all that. Take a look at it, a little bit of a deep dive. Look at the noise performance between everything. Look at some of the, the characteristics uh, between the, just the different settings between the high build quality, medium build quality, RPM filter on, RPM filter off. And just again, deep dive into all that. Again, if you're interested in that kind of depth and kind of analyzing it, check out the links down below. But for now, hopefully that was helpful to understand the most important things like how to set up black box. It's very simple and easy. Uh, and what to record, the, the moves. You gotta do certain moves. You just can't go fly around. It's not gonna give you very good information like crap ins, crap out. Uh, you can just do that, but you don't have these stepped inputs to really analyze. And then how to open it up and kind of just look at that basic thing. You're, when I'm entering these stick commands, is the quad actually following them? If it is, your tunes, that's as good as it's going to get. And if you want it to feel different or whatever, then just adjust your rates, adjust your gimbals, adjust your, you know, spring tension, things of that nature. Um, that That's where you want to be looking for, for those pieces of the puzzle. Again, thanks, everybody. I uh, hope this helps. Drop any questions or comments you have down below, and we'll see you on the next one.